YouTube, what's going on? It's Kevin the Tech Ninja here. And today we're taking the iPhone 13 Pro and comparing it to the iPhone 14 Pro. Is this upgrade actually worth it? If you don't know who I am, I'm a dude that talks about technology and I give it to you real without the hype and all that stuff. And we're just gonna talk about these two phones and see if you should actually upgrade. Now, Apple has made a lot of changes this year and arguably the most we've seen in quite a while, but you guys know how I do it. I'm not gonna talk about the specs. I'm not gonna really talk about the keynote, but I wanna talk about my experience using both phones and what I know about them. On paper, the iPhone 14 has seen quite a few changes. Now, one thing that sticks out the most is notch or I guess the lack of notch. Now they're using something called a dynamic island. Even though it's a pretty funny name, it actually is pretty cool. It's a different way to show what's actually on the phone and things you can look at without having to go into an app. I'll talk about a lot more in my full review because a lot of the things regarding the Dynamic Island doesn't work all the way just yet because software isn't ready. But so far, I love the potential of what it can actually do. Now, here's some examples of it in action. So when listening to music, you can see the controls from this bar. And I like how when you flick up the music, it actually dives back into the bar. Also a timer, you can access it here as well. You can always see your timer counting down without having to go back into the timer app and stuff like that. Now, I'll say around November, there'll be more apps that will support this dynamic island. So it's really hard to fully judge it, but so far, so good. The always on display, is another feature that is only available for the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. And it is actually a feature I have been begging for for many, many years. So the way it works is pretty cool. When you're in this low powered state, this phone is actually using very little energy, but you can still see everything on the phone that you, that you want to see. So if you get a notification, it'll pop up in here. You can see the time, you can see your widgets, all those things you can see in this low power mode. So the screen is never just off. Now it's only using one Hertz. So according to Apple, it's not gonna use a lot of energy to actually use it and you're not gonna lose a lot of battery life by having this activated. Also, what's pretty clever that Apple did with this feature is that if you have a picture wallpaper, it can fade the image without losing the color of the image too, which I think is really cool. The iPhone 13 just doesn't have this feature at all, and it's a feature that I've been begging for for quite a while. It's really nice to get a text message and your whole phone doesn't light up, whereas it's just a little bubble pops up at the bottom and the, and the screen is still dim. This can only be done with the new display on the phone. Now, I've only been using the phone for a couple days, so I can't tell you how it affects battery life, but I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary. In the hands, both phones are very similar and the build is just as good as ever. So the buttons are in the same location, all those things line up. So when you pick up the phone, you put the phone in your hand, expect the same experience. Nothing on that side has changed. Same screen size, same everything. So the iPhone 13 Pro and the 14 Pro, they come in different colors, right? You can select different colors. There's like a new purple color too that you could check out, but that's not a big deal because if you want to change the way the phone looks, my sponsor dbrand can help you out. For like less than $20, you can get a brand new skin for your phone. You apply it on there and you have like a whole new phone. You know, some people that accessorize their phones, they change the color and change the skin up like every couple months to get a fresh looking phone. Hit my links down below to dbrand your device. And once you do it, you can't go back. Now the camera setup, the way it looks is the same, but when you put them on the side, yeah, it's a lot thicker, but there's a good reason for it to be thicker. We now have a 48 megapixel sensor and it has larger pixels, which on paper is significantly larger than the 12 megapixel camera and the smaller sensors. The ultra wide and telephoto is the same megapixel, but the one cool feature is that since the sensor is bigger, you now have a 2X zoom with the 3X zoom with no quality loss, meaning you have an extra focal length with only having three lenses. So what does that actually mean when I was walking around taking photos. Am I noticing anything? The camera is better. Now what I find is that not only you get more detail after zooming into the shot and taking it, but in lower light, I felt the image was more lifelike. I found that in details, things were much more refined and not as muddy. Look at this picture of Andrew's beard. You can see here, it is just has more detail in the beard while zooming in. I know it's a weird example zooming in on something like that, but when you're taking pictures in different lighting scenarios, you want the best possible image because maybe you want to zoom in. Maybe you want to crop someone out. Maybe you want to do all those things and having the best possible image, especially 48 megapixels versus 12, you can do those things and it still keeps the details. Apple did say it's two times or three times better in low light depending on the lens and there's no way for me to measure that. It is better, but double? I don't know. Okay, so this part I'm aware won't matter to 90% of people, but 
it's something that is worth mentioning. This is for the pro shooters out there or who wants to take the best photos with their phones and being able to edit these photos. Pro Raw is now in 48 megapixels, which unlocks even more flexibility in post. I need to admit, I've never used Pro Raw or Pro Res on my phone. I, I feel like that's adding an extra layer that I don't want to do. But sometimes when I'm using just my phone, I will take my camera if I need to take a thumbnail or I'll take my camera if I need to just grab uh, like a full landscape image or something like that. If I have the ability to use 48 megapixels on this phone in Pro Raw, that might be able to replace that one scenario I may have. The iPhone 14 Pro has seen an upgrade on video as well. Cinematic mode is now in 4K compared to 1080p. You can also shoot in 24 frames per second in cinematic mode, although the 24 frames per second is something that could be rolled out on the 13 Pro, so I won't just say that's the 14 Pro. There's now also an action camera mode on the 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max exclusive, just because it is a bigger sensor, so it can crop in more. And when you do action mode, it's not in 4K, it's 2.5K, which I think is fine. And what happens is it takes your, your video, crops it in a little bit, and allows for more shakes and more variability. You can like run with it and you can follow more action and it is more stable. It's not perfect, nothing's gonna be perfect in that sense but it is a lot better than just standard mode without the action cam activated. So if you are doing something like I do, run around with my child in the backyard, chase him around, chase her around, all those things, it is much better if you go to action mode on your phone and you still get audio, it still looks good. So yeah, that is a definitely an enhancement as well. Okay, this is the front facing camera on the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro. Um, I wanna know if you're seeing anything as far as quality, audio, anything like that. I am obviously, I'm gonna be switching audio back and forth. You're gonna see in the bottom which audio file I'm using. And yeah, let me know how it looks. Let me know how it sounds. And uh, yeah, let me know. So we gotta talk about performance. Um, this is using Apple's newest chip, the newest Bionic processor compared to the 13 Pro, which has an older processor. Look. Day-to-day -day activities, you're not gonna notice a difference, right? I'm not gonna sit up here and say this phone is that much faster and that much better. We can't do that. But what I can tell you is that that future proofs the phone more. So if that new software comes out next year, it may require that new processor or if there's like a specific app that does things like video editing and things like that, things will go faster. But day-to-day -day activity, you're not gonna notice a much faster performance. But those chips also enable new things. So, you know, the new chip enables that action camera mode. It enables you to do that cinematic mode in 4K. So the new chip does more than just speed, but it enhances the overall experience with the phone. So the chip does help in a lot of circumstances, but if you're buying this phone thinking like, I'm gonna do everything faster, that's the wrong mindset to have. Apple is suggesting you get about an hour longer of battery life on this 14 Pro versus 13 Pro. For me, I need about a 30 days or at least two weeks to use the phones to really give battery life opinion because I'm using the phone more, right? I'm shooting video, I'm doing all these extra things that I don't do on a normal day. I'm not at home. Like, it's not acclimated to my normal life just yet. So it's hard to give you battery opinion, but that would definitely come really soon. Anyways, guys, those were my opinions of the two phones. Is it worth it is the question. I think if you're coming from a 13 Pro, is it worth upgrading to the 14 Pro? I do think the 14 Pro is a significant upgrade over the 13 Pro for those specific uses. Like, do you want the better camera? Do you want this dynamic island? Like, do you want those very, sp and, I mean, I guess always on display too. Those are things that are important to me. So I would upgrade, but if you say, the camera's good enough for me, I don't really care dynamic island, eh, always on display, eh. Like, if you're that type of person, no, don't upgrade. But if you like this new tech that Apple is using, yes, upgrade. The camera bump is a little bit bigger, sure, but you start getting used to it anyways. And also, if you're wondering, your old cases won't work for the new phone, so you have to get new cases. Anyways, guys, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys really, really soon. I mean, like, probably tomorrow. So be looking out for your inboxes. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.